All right, so in this video, I'm just going to go over the basics of using magic patterns for AI prototyping. As you'll see, magic patterns is dedicated towards PMs and tech professionals who want to prototype their ideas quickly. And it's pretty straightforward. It features a very similar interface that you've seen before. We basically have a text box here where we can type in something and get some result. The very first tip that I'll give you is that including a screenshot in an existing application will go a very long way in terms of getting a better result. Honestly, any type of visual input, even if you just do like a quick mock-up on a napkin and take a screenshot or a picture with your phone, any type of visual input provides a lot of context to the AI in order to get exactly what you want. So what we'll be doing in this exercise is recreating LinkedIn, uh, just as an example of a product that we could reproduce. So first things first, I'm gonna hop over into LinkedIn and grab a screenshot. All right, so as you can see, I've added the screenshot here. And if I wanted to, I could, could just leave it at this. I don't necessarily have to type anything in, but what I'm gonna do is actually try to remove some of the information that's in the screenshot that's specific to people who posted on my feed and just get something more generic. So I'll go ahead and type up a prompt for that. From here, we basically kicked off our generation. So you can see that my prompt was to remove any sp user specific information and replace it with general tech content. There's nothing about this prompt that's like a best practice. This is me just telling the AI model a little bit about the information that I want to be stored. Later on in some upcoming videos, we'll talk more about prompting best practices. But while we're waiting, I'll talk a little bit about Magic Patterns itself. So Magic Patterns has a lot of features that you'd expect to see in these types of tools, as well as some that are unique to it. A couple of things to start off with. First, we do have a code view and a chat view. The code view is actually really great because you can hop in there and make some minor modifications if you want to. So if you want to change the text, for example, or some basic styling changes, you don't necessarily need to use the chat to do that. You can just hop into the code and make those changes. Down below, you'll see that we also have a selector. You'll see me use this throughout the course where we can select UI elements directly from the code or the, the preview on the left-hand side. And again, either make changes directly or even open up the code to make changes manually, but we can kind of navigate the code using that selector. So that's a unique feature actually of Magic Patterns. Most other tools don't allow you to navigate to a section of the code based on the visual input. A couple of other small things. So obviously we can share this with others. We can also deploy this to a link if we want to. We can download the code as well. We can sync to GitHub and export to Figma if needed. So there's lots of different ways to interact with Magic Patterns. And here we see we have our initial mock, right? So this looks pretty close to uh, LinkedIn, obviously. So we have kind of our, our nav bar at the top. You see that we have some content as we go down and so on. So a couple of things in terms of how to actually interact with it from here. Obviously, the first thing we can do is just send more messages. So send more commands in the bottom right hand corner. Uh, but I want to give you a couple of tips on prompting at this point. So the first thing is that it's often a good idea to try to get a plan as you are working through the changes here. So rather than just saying something like, you know, add more posts, what you might say is create a plan to add some mock data for multiple posts. And what the AI should do is tell you a little bit more about what it's going to do as the next step and then implement that step as well. So why don't we go ahead and give that a try now? We'll say, create a plan to add more mock posts with mock data. The nice part about this create a plan language is that it does two things. One is it helps you understand what the AI is doing. So the AI will do more work to describe uh, what it's performing. And then the second thing is that it actually generally results in better uh, implementation when there is a plan associated to the work. So, you know, if you provide like a very generic one word prompt, there's like maybe a 50 50 chance that it works. And as you get more and more specific with the language that you provide, you kind of increase the chance that that's going to work correctly. So, we're going to create a collection of mock posts and, you know, add those in as well. And we can see that it created a mock data file for us. And then it's also updating the post component as well. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So once this wraps up, I can show you an example of our updated post, and then we'll probably leave it there for this quick introduction. All right, and as we scroll down here, you can see that we now have a bunch of posts, right? So, you know, various content, including images and so on. Uh, but for now, this is fine. So we got our, our nice reproduction of LinkedIn. In the next video, I'm going to show you another way to reproduce UIs uh, using another tool offered by Magic Patterns. So when you're ready, I'll see you over there.